the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul lifting messages, faith based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. The hand of the Lord is upon me, and I want to prophesy. As I prophesy, the power of God will be causing breakthroughs and restoration. The anointing of the Spirit is strong upon me. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I command every power holding anyone down right now in the name of jesus i command you let them go let them go right now let them go i prophesy breakthrough i command breakthrough in the name of the lord jesus i command breakthrough to your family breakthrough financial breakthrough breakthrough in health breakthrough in your academic breakthrough in your job in the name of jesus Amen. open heaven open heaven it's your season to rise it's your season of greatness every power stopping you we challenge it tonight in the name of jesus Amen. Please sit down. God bless you. Be seated. Your life must become uncomfortable for anything that is not of God. See, I tell you, the power of God is. I sense such a strong anointing resting on people. As I teach, God is going to be visiting people in very strong ways. Enough is enough. God gave us a word. He said, I will increase your greatness and comfort you on every side. I'm not sure I can go into the details of tonight's teaching but I hope I'll be able to touch I really have a very serious revelation that I want to share let's see how far God can help us wherever we stop hallelujah Genesis 1 Verse 26. The Lord gave us a word that this year for us is a season of light and dominion. It's not just a word like many ministries have a word at the beginning of the year. Hallelujah. Light. He said, They that sat in Nephtha and Zebulun have seen a great light. A great light Genesis 1 verse 26 and God said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion let them this man I hope you know that when he was speaking the woman was still in the man because man Adam not the name of a man dust hallelujah man was first created body has thou prepared for me hallelujah and then he brought about a separation between the man and the woman but before then he blessed them and he said let them have dominion now listen it is in the character of the spirit 
that the same word that brings you prophecy is the same word that prepares the way for that prophecy to come to pass are you getting my point the bible says when at the brook cherith when the brook dried he told elijah the prophet he said get thee go down to Zarephath." he said dear i have commanded a widow to feed thee but the woman did not sound like god had informed her a prophet was coming however the same word that took elijah to Zarephath was the same word that softened the heart of the woman so when god gives you a word the word follows you through and makes sure that the path is clear until that word comes to pass are you getting what i'm saying so when god said let man have dominion that means there must have been a provision for that man to access what it takes to walk in that dominion hallelujah god does not just speak empty talk it's like sending a man to the market and not giving him money so let's see how god equipped man to exercise dominion in reality hallelujah genesis chapter 2 i wish we had time but i'll just touch briefly wherever thank you jesus verse 8 and the lord planted a garden eastward in eden and there he put the man that he had formed and out of the ground made the lord to grow every tree that is pleasant in the sight and good for food now watch this everybody look up the bible says god made every other tree to grow from the ground are you following me however the bible says there were two trees those trees did not grow from the ground follow me are you getting my point the bible says god made to grow every tree pleasant to the eyes that is good for food then it says the tree of life also also in the midst of the garden and then it says and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil please follow me i want to teach you powerful spiritual laws that can help you to walk in dominion to eat of every tree including the tree of life are you getting my point the first revelation i want you to have is that man's eating the tree of life was not for hunger are you getting me adam could not be hungry he was not in the fallen state are you getting me in the realm of the spirit you don't eat for hunger for hunger you eat for impartation and knowledge that's what food does in the spirit food does not satisfy hunger no no when you eat food like let's say in spiritually now i'm not talking of all these demonic things that people you saw yourself eating sweet in the dream that's not what i'm talking about hallelujah you don't eat in the spirit to satisfy hunger food does two things for you in eden's atmosphere one it gives you knowledge two it gives you impartation hallelujah that's why the prophet was giving the word and he ate it when he ate it it did something to him are you getting what i'm saying now watch this everybody write the mystery of forbidden knowledge that's not the topic i want to show you what the two trees were supposed to represent one was the tree of life the other was called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil another word was the it, it carried what we call the mystery of forbidden knowledge the word mystery just means hidden truths about a knowledge that god does not want his people to know not because he hates them you must understand this god does not want us to know everything and then i will show you what the angels came and did the fallen angels when they came they did something to the daughters of men are you getting me 
they took from this forbidden knowledge and they began to feed mankind with it ah. time, 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 time. praise God God categorically warned man he said the trees in the garden of Eden every time you eat them they will do something to you are you getting what I'm saying so if you eat of the tree of life it will keep giving you the revelation and the insight to walk in dominion it gives life eating of that tree gives life are you getting me that's the mystery of eternal life adumbrated by that tree that's why when jesus came he said ah, ah man shall not live by bread alone if man wants to live he must keep eating something are you getting me so walking experientially for eternal life to be culminated in you there is something that must be done in you please listen and this is where i want to balance this is what where we get the concept of immortality how many of you have heard all those teachings of immortality now unfortunately many people brought the teachings but they did not understand how the operation immortality is not something you claim immortality is a product of eating of the tree of life again and again it causes eternal life not just to translate from your spirit to your soul but to happen in your body and that's where you say oh death where is your sting are you getting what i'm saying now it so happens that our rate of transformation is so slow are you getting me now that the degradation of the sin nature in our body catches up with us before these capsules of rejuvenation find expression in us this is why although the law of immortality is at work not many people will ever enter it the secret is not just prayer for long life the secret is intercoursing with this eternal life that was how adam was supposed to live forever are you getting my point now so by eating of the tree of life that was why when he fell god said no you can't eat of the tree of life again because the tree of life keeps you in whatever state you are and stops you from dying if he ate of the tree of life salvation redemption would not be possible again so god drove him out are you seeing that now god didn't just drive him because he was angry he drove man out of the garden because he loved him praise the lord what is this i want to explain to you what is this mystery of forbidden knowledge look up how many of you have heard of certain books called the books of moses right 10 books of Moses, 11 books of Moses. How many of you have heard of all these extra biblical references that were written by Egyptians and written by all kinds of people? Have you heard of those kinds of things? How many of you have heard of people that lived long ago in mountains who wrote certain books that were found? Now listen, if I don't teach you this because the Lord began to reveal to me that this is the strategy the devil is bringing when the angels do you know why god did not want man to know i hope you know that adam never knew adam never knew that before his coming there was a history hallelujah he had never eaten of the tree that gives the knowledge of good and with it comes evil are you getting me adam was supposed to eat of the tree of life and continue his intimacy with god and reproduce children after his kind when satan came into the garden satan did not make adam sleep with a dog no he knew that that would not get the agenda done he said man come there is one tree i want you to touch just taste it once it will do something to you are you getting what i'm saying now everybody say forbidden knowledge this is the information that through sorcery and witchcraft please hear me the fallen angels and all of these aliens and all of these devilish spirits they downloaded and brought to inhabitants in the earth are you getting me these were the informations that were given men like nimrod 
so they had super intelligence about certain things are you following me i want to shock you i hope you will believe me look at me did you know that most of our technological advancement are you getting me are as a result of fraternity with beings that were not in the earth are you getting me it had to be a supply of a level it's not just human discipline don't mind what all those books tell you just be hard working and think well no sir those people had interactions with beings is that how did solomon become extremely rich and blessed what happened to him god visited him from another realm is that not true they had a conversation listen this conversation is still happening in the earth till today are you following me let me share with you something very briefly i hope you believe me the bible says jesus was given the parable of the wheat and the tear is that true he said while men everybody while men hold on he says while men slept something happened in the earth realm where men were sleeping now the sleeping is not bad we always use that sleep to mean while men were backsliding no he meant literal sleep that means there is something that cannot happen when men are awake are you getting me jesus was telling us something powerful he says the moment men sleep some beings can walk into the earth and he said the enemy quickly comes plants something and goes his way so you wake up with a growth that was not there before you slept and is somebody following me what happened who came and put it there while men slept are you seeing why the bible says the keeper of israel neither nor it says every time men sleep something happens in this earth realm there are certain beings that come into the earth realm that's why people sleep in the night and in their dream realms they have all kinds of encounters with beings and animals and all kinds of things happen from intercourse to eating to every kind of thing and they wake up the next day only for them to fail at work or fail in exams something happened while men slept the psalmist saw this in psalm 91 and he says thou shalt not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day right not the noisome pestilence but many believers are dull of understanding dominion dominion is not just a function of i claim it there is spiritual intelligence that can bring you into that position where you walk in dominion are you hearing what i'm saying please are you getting something so this tree of the knowledge of good and evil was never supposed to be consumed by man are you getting me look, look at me when you open that book you will find good but you will not know when evil is planted in the good are you getting what i'm saying that's why a pastor can go and read the 12 book of moses or go and read scientology and be looking at it and saying wow so candles or certain things can do something to witches and wizards everybody say forbidden knowledge are you getting that now and then they read certain zodiac books and they look and they say why not i add this knowledge to what i already have are you getting what i'm saying and they will seem to walk powerfully that is the forbidden knowledge the tree of the knowledge of good and evil sometimes we celebrate it what do we call it rema is that true and we bring all kinds of things i've heard about men of god and prophets and all kinds of people 
who do every kind of nonsense in the body of Christ all kinds of magic happening everywhere I once heard of a man of God who came for a program and he was preaching and he called somebody he said look at me the person who looked at him became blind at once yes completely blind at once members were clapping people were running to come and drop seed i don't know what they were tapping into but they were running and everybody was happy watch this and then after the guy preached 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 he did everything and then he prayed again and the guy was open and he said for that reason everything that is closed in everybody's life you know i, I open it and you see everybody just shouting amen listen let me tell you listen listen will people get results they will get tremendous results are you hearing what i'm saying because the laws that have been operated are valid spiritual laws but this is the point because it was not initiated and sponsored by the spirit of god although it is correct knowledge it is called witchcraft so it's not about what produces result it's about the spirit of god initiating and sustaining that process hallelujah there are many teachings coming to the body of christ men and women of god who went to lock themselves to pray for three days and seven days or whatever and in the midst of this prayer because many people did not exalt the word above prophecy they had visitations but they were not of god however they were not visitations of inhabitants of the earth and they came and committed to them power and gave them all kinds of things and they came out from all of those experiences and you see power you see anointing but it is not initiated and sponsored by the spirit and the sign is number one the glory never goes to god such kinds of people never give god the glory because it is part of the agreement are you following me now it is god's desire that we grow the bible even said knowledge shall increase but you must guard when the table is set before you you are only permitted to eat of the tree of life there is a kind of knowledge that only puffs up have you seen people hold on i want to say a few things that will challenge you have you seen a lot of people please i don't mean this for criticism or anything have you seen a lot of people who got mad as a result of prayer have you have you seen those kinds of things that somebody got to pray and he started praying until they took him to the psychiatry and locked him i remember a lady years ago this lady was praying in tongues seemingly for about almost 48 hours i was there abu secure this girl was just praying 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 she wouldn't listen to anybody i wish i knew what i know now and the thing confuses the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Everybody say forbidden knowledge. Men of God, if you are in ministry here, you have to be very careful. That, that insatiable lust for rema and revelation, you must guard carefully and let this that's why walking in the spirit is the secret it gives you life when you walk in the flesh you may learn a lot of principles that although they are powerful it leads men to death so the more revelation a man is getting the more he's dying not to self dying as a result of the absence of light see this is how you know is one character to know that a man is not of God when you compare the rate of revelation versus the rate of transformation when there is so much word conferences happening conventions happening meetings happening rema upon rema Bible study all kinds of things yet you do not see that that word is chaff it lacks the life to build people there is error 
I hope somebody is learning something here. God put two trees. And all the trees can supply knowledge. For one, it is the knowledge that brings life. There are certain teachings on deliverance that does not bring life. Is that true? There are certain teachings on deliverance that brings people into bondage. Because people added Bible knowledge plus confessions that they got from people who were once witches and wizards. Is that true? And they added everything. And they say, if you want the devil to run away from you, once it's nine o'clock, wear red. That, that one is not in the Bible. You see that? That is, that is deception dimension there. I, I, is somebody following what I'm saying? I apologize if maybe these are the tenants of your church or your ministry. I really apologize. I love the body of Christ, but I have to teach you the truth. So there is the biblical concept of deliverance. For instance, then there are others who have spent their entire life interviewing seemingly witches and wizards, begging for audience with herbalists to explain to them the realm of the spirit, knowing that Satan is the father of all liars. Are you getting my point now? And it is on the strength of those information they have built their prayer ministries or built a lot of things. So when you want to pray for somebody, you look and say, uh -uh, I can't pray for you like this. You are wearing a black shoe. Change it into a special kind of slippers that you wear when you enter my, my this thing for the power to work. This one is astrology and witchcraft. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Or you get all kinds of candles with different colors. This flame, that flame, this flame. And you say, now come and sit in the midst of it and just be calm as I drive this spirit. Uh -uh. This is called transcendental meditation. This is witchcraft. Hallelujah. Yet, you come and sit down in the midst of that candle. Something suddenly happens to you and you start taking first in the class. All of a sudden, your intelligence is heightened. You think beyond your level. And because you Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Are you following my story, please? Because you are getting results, you will be encouraged. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Be careful. Because many people are eating of the forbidden tree. They are eating right now today here and now they are getting access to knowledge that seems to be producing results thank you but that knowledge is not of god maybe some of us right here as you are sitting down are already in these deceptions the moment you read those books although they are blowing your mind but something in your spirit starts checking the holy ghost is telling you uh -uh, when did you get into this when did you get into this and you see these books are in our libraries you can get them online many of you have watched every kind of thing you see a man who has supernatural ability to listen to plants and animals and you sit down there are all kinds of books people research online how to hear the language of plants and animals and they put all kinds of codes they say recite it by 12 or 1 many christians you get up carry your big head and stand in front of the mirror and now recite it the last you recite it and just wake up and see that it's morning you slept something happened to you you may not know what happened again anytime god wants to take in and bring out of a man sleep happens and god calls adam to sleep hallelujah are you understanding this we are talking about dominion through through spiritual intelligence the knowledge that leads to death i'm going to share with you very importantly very quickly two laws even if it's just in five minutes wherever we stop that's it for the night two important spiritual laws that can help us 
I'm committed to making sure that God grants us spiritual intelligence. That we have knowledge. This is what makes you strong in the spirit. Prayer is good. But it's not just enough to pray. You must have knowledge. So that when you see things, you know what laws are in place. And you know what to do about them. Knowledge takes away ignorance. Knowledge takes away shock from your life. So that you are not surprised about anything. When you hear that something has happened, you don't just panic. You understand. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Law number one is called the law of territory. If you want to walk in dominion, you must understand this law. The law of territory. Everybody say the law of territory. Look up, please. Dominion is territorial. Dominion is territorial. Even in the satanic organogram, they understand the jurisdiction and the boundaries of territories. There are spirits and principalities that do not operate in the earth realm. It's not their territory of work. Are you getting me? Every time they are on the earth realm, they are powerless. There are certain demonic operations that are territorial. I'll give you an instance. When you go to certain territories in this Nigeria, you see that there are certain traits and satanic operations given to that territory. When you go outside of the territory, it doesn't seem to have a hold on you again. Is that true? And you go into another territory, maybe it's drunkenness that is there. You go to another territory, maybe it's lust and immorality. The operations of the kingdom and the operations of the spirit are territorial. Every man, every kingdom citizen must know this. Abraham, come out of your father's house. Come out of this territory where you are into a land that I will show you. And if you do get to that land, then I will bless you. And you will be a blessing. I will bless them that bless you and curse him that curses you. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. But that will only happen if you leave one territory to another. Everybody say dominion is territorial. It's a spiritual intelligence that you must understand. Number two is that you must understand very, very clearly that in the place of your assignment, that is where you will exercise true dominion. everything opens up for you at your assigned territory there is an assigned territory where the spirit of dominion can walk in your life hallelujah this is what a lot of people do not understand please look up you must take out time to hear from god are you getting me as to where he wants you to be at every season not just what you want him to do for you but where your blessings are territorial and isaac sowed in that land genesis 26 from verse 12 and isaac sowed not just in any land although there was famine god told him this is your territory of dominion so in that land a man of god may go to zamfara and sit down and say zamfara is not a lucrative place let me run to abuja for ministry and he goes outside of territory are you getting my point and you see a man struggling in a land of plenty he's struggling yet you will see another man in the same zamfara blessings coming from people those who are born again and those who are not born again because you are in the place of your territory Say the law of territory. Many of us right now are at the face of our lives where we are trusting to know where God wants us to settle for every season. It can change, but that in every season, 
there is a territory you miss your territory you will never walk in dominion because where god has assigned you he has commanded the ravens to feed you he has commanded the widow to attend to you are you getting what i'm saying i'll never forget when we finished the crusade in joss and the pfn people called me in the particular local government in joss and they said would you come and establish a branch of your ministry we'll give you an auditorium free and we'll give a few pastors to train I was happy I went to God God said you would die I told the PFN people God said I would die I'm really sorry I can't go as simple as that many of you would have said ah breakthrough God has bought her my bread and you will go there that's why you can see a ministry flourishing in a, in a particular place and then they move to a place and it's as though God did not call them again favor is a sign that you are in the right place when i sent thee lackest thou anything when i sent thee lackest thou anything by the grace of god at this level of ministry i can tell you i am sure that we are in the place assigned that's why it doesn't matter what venue we use whether it is blue roof whether it is charity and faith whether it's whatever there seems to be grace backing us so many people have called me one lady said them and their family members they are praying that i must come to abuja they say relocate your level is bigger than zaria i said i appreciate you but i remember there was a man called ahitophel in scripture don't let people advise you out of your destiny they may be genuine they look at you and say kai zaria is it's too much for your level you say it's true just that what will we do and you start thinking and pack your load out of your destiny into a land where there is no assigned space for you you get into the land and there is no divine assignment for you there's no space for you you keep fighting and struggling with everybody moses said if your presence will not go with us let us remain in this territory where we are sure that your presence is with us this may be the answer to some of the tragedy of many of our parents they got up because of looking for greener pastures they just packed their load and said lagos here we come 10 years now they are still suffering every door shuts at your face it's a sign to go back for retreat and say lord speak to me speak to me where am i missing it don't just let jobs and all of these things decide your destiny i know this looks like a, a stupid statement and many people will criticize me for it they'll say are you joking in nigeria where there's no job but you must be careful you exercise dominion in the place of your territory your territory does not just mean the geography alone it means your jurisdiction of operation are you getting me if i go and enter the prophetic ministry right now as an office i'm not a prophet as an office i may operate in prophetic dimensions but god did not call me as a prophet in, in officially like your office your jurisdiction if i now say i'm going to come in and make sure i prophesy for everybody one by one i give you two weeks many of you will start praying and fasting for me because you will start having all kinds of dreams of me missing it you say oh god what is happening this guy is missing this thing there are many men of god who were called to be teachers or pastors but they they got outside of territory are you getting what i'm saying now there are other people who were called into prayer ministries their anointing is the anointing for intercession but they've now begun to teach wealth seminars and teaching all kinds of prosperity conventions that's not wrong except that you have come out of territory everybody say territory you will only walk in your dominion if you confine yourself and limit yourself to your territory your jurisdiction of operation there are certain dimensions of ministry if God instructs me to engage in I will find graces that are called at the heart of that area and bring them 
it doesn't matter whether i can preach more than them it doesn't matter whether i have more miracles than them uh -uh. it's about the grace and the dominion when a man is in his area of territory you will exercise dominion freely you see why a lot of pastors are struggling you go to a church and copy what a man of god is doing you do not know his his ministerial packaging are you getting my point so many people who are pastors trying to do the work of apostles little persecution comes and they are crying they cannot move forward because see when god calls a man he equips you according to the office when you learn this law you will walk in dominion absolute dominion there are things i have no business doing if god gives me an instruction he will have to give me a special grace for it or direct me to the people who will administer that level of building to the body of christ watch my knee calls it the limitation of the body people struggle because they do not understand their jurisdiction of operation is someone getting blessed tonight your assigned territory god has honored you in the area of catering when it comes to catering you walk in dominion here the next thing you got up and you just heard that people are doing um building materials and you just get up and go there you say i'm supplying building materials your first supply there was trouble second supply 10 years down the line you are still struggling everybody say territory thank you jesus the second law and then we will pray this one is very important it is a law that you must believe in and walk in it it's called the law of exchange this is a powerful spiritual law if you must walk in dominion giving something you love for something you desire is called the law of exchange the law of exchange you laid aside your majesty gave up everything for me suffered at the hands of those you have created you took all my guilt and shame when you died and rose again now today you reign in heaven and now exalted i really want to worship you my lord you are my heart and i am yours forever and ever i will love you you are the only one who died for me you gave your life to set me free and so i lift my voice to you in adoration listen how many of you have heard that a man gave up his ability to give birth to children for money have you heard of that everybody say the law of exchange when you understand this law you will know the reason why evil seems to happen in a place unhindered when the bible says an eye for an eye have you heard that tooth for tooth i've studied it it's not like when i break your teeth you will break back my own to revenge are you getting me it's called compensation that means if i do something to you you must take back something that can appease you to the equivalence of the offense are you getting what i'm saying it's called the law of exchange that's where we get trade by butter i give you a cow you must find something that is commensurate to the worth of that cow are you getting me that's why when man fell based on the justice of god god looked around to see what can be given he said if i give gabriel it's not enough if i give michael it's not enough do you know why because angels themselves are imperfect i hope you know it angels excel in light they excel in strength but they are still imperfect do you want me to show you job let's look at it one scripture you are the one who said i should show you <laughs> don't 
Turn to the book of Job. Sorry about the time. We'll round up now. See, ba 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 ba. He could not give the angels because they are imperfect. Job 4. Please project it. Job 4, verse 18 and 19. I want us to read it together. Job 4. Can we hurry up? Our time is... Job 4. Everyone read. Want to read. He charges angels with what? Verse 19. He said even his servants, he didn't trust them. And even the angels, he charged them with foolishness. How much more a man that wants God to use him without being trained. <laughs> so God could not give Gabriel and Michael and all of these people. And so he looked at the perfect one, the sinless one, and said, you are the only one that can go as an exchange for what I desire. Please listen to me. The same principle Satan wanted to use for Jesus Christ. He took Jesus to the mountain and he said bow to me in other words let me give you wealth and exchange it with your loyalty for me are you getting my point just bow to me since you are the expression of the godhead bow to me so that the father will see you bowing to me and i can give you wealth so when a man goes to meet a herbalist he tells him what are you going to give me in exchange please listen i will tell you this is the reason why many territories are powerful. This is why some of the terrorisms you see in Nigeria are powerful. They always give something in exchange for the authority to invade a territory. That's why they do it military might irrespective. Are you getting my point? When you come to God and say, Lord, I want you to use me. God says, what is the exchange for it? And he said, Lord, take my life. Have you heard that scripture that says, What shall it profit a man if he does what? And what? Loses his soul. That means, he said, Satan, let's do business. And Satan said, of course, I'm a good businessman. I will give you my soul. Give me the world. So that anywhere I do business, whether in Italy, whether in Dubai, let it work. So that I must be the governor of this state or I must be this, take my soul. So that I will be the reigning musician and nobody can stop me. And he says, all right, let's have the deal. And he says, take my soul. They have received the mark of the beast. That's the 666 there. It's not something that will be put on their hand. They have given their soul. They have received the mark. Are you getting my point? So Satan comes to you. What do you want to give in exchange? Please listen. Something must be given in exchange. If you must walk in true dominion. Everybody knows this. It's not a herbal strategy. It's a spiritual strategy. I'm walking in the anointing. I'm walking in by the grace of God. Because I received this of grace. But something went for it. My life, my will, my ambitions, my desires, they were laid down. That's why I wrote that song. Take all of me, all of me. You have my everything. That's my deal with God. You have my everything. Are you getting me? So my entire life will give him glory. The day I compromise on my own part of the deal, his mercy will show up. But if I walk in rebellion, I have broken the deal. That's the reason why a man can give an exchange. He will say, I will give you my firstborn. Only give me this political position. When the firstborn is now born, 
the people come and say oh yeah oh, we gave you the power we gave you the wife where is our firstborn and you say sorry i didn't realize that children are this nice i've changed my mind they say you've changed your mind we will see all of a sudden the child starts getting sick they must collect their child except the power of god intervenes this is the reason why many families are suffering people covenanted families in exchange for money kings covenanted their territories are you hearing what i'm saying they gave it in exchange for protection they gave it there are families that gave in exchange their fertility so no children can happen in that family there are families that traded boys they said there shall be no men take give us might what men would have done let the women in our family do but take all the men and you find out that no matter how people try they will never give birth to men they give birth to men they will die no matter what happens you just hear that he was taking fresh air outside a bike came and carried him are you hearing what i'm saying exchange see these laws are not old testament laws they are spiritual laws they are still working today here and now are you hearing what i'm saying this is the law that terrorists use before they ever carry an assignment they must take out time are you seeing the reason why every time they shed blood people become richer think about it the moment blood is shed somebody makes money exchange 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 are you seeing the reason why the sacrifice of solomon touched the lord he offered a thousand bond offerings it was an expression of his heart god could not stop he came down many of us may never walk in dominion because you are not ready to exchange your life for his life you are not ready to exchange your strength for his strength but tonight how many people are ready to say lord take everything if this is the price for your grace and your glory don't let anybody fool you and say there's no price you go to a harbor list and see if he will just give you power like that look at me there are men who sacrifice their wives for wealth true or false some christians right there are pastors who sacrifice their children for church growth there are pastors who sacrifice their members for expansion I've said it again and again nothing just happens the day Jesus will come we have a long wall film to watch that's when we will know that most of the things we call coincidences were not coincidences hallelujah listen let me tell you something I will never forget one time I was praying in the night years ago and I prayed and I was dedicating my body unto God I stripped myself the way my mother gave birth to me and I lay down on the floor I said Lord let this body become a superconductor of your anointing if there is anything you can do to this mortal body let it carry your power this body cannot be used for sin and hell it, it, I dedicate it unto you and God said this is what you are giving me I will put my glory upon your life and somebody just comes and says, God, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. And the, Lord, the demons are just looking and saying, look at all these ignorant people. These are the negotiations that many scientists did with aliens. Are you getting me? Many intelligent people. They said, give us, give us technology. Give us the wisdom you used and gave the pharaohs of old. Give us and let us do supernatural things in exchange. We will give you the souls of men we will give you mankind we will give you a lot of things and it's happening here in the earth that's why you can see a man sitting down all of a sudden within two weeks this man becomes a mysterious millionaire either god has done something to him or the devil has done something there was an exchange somewhere a man of god is sitting down and all of a sudden power comes upon his life he begins to do supernatural things i tell you there is an exchange he has either gone to the throne of grace to exchange his life and say lord take it 
take my life and use me for your glory or he has gone to a herbalist and say take my firstborn or every two two years kill 10 members from my church as a sacrifice and let the anointing keep rising The life that I now live, Paul told us the secret of his anointing. He said, the life that I now live, I live by the faith of God. I surrender all to you. Everything I give. I'm teaching you spiritual laws withholding nothing withholding nothing listen you can copy a man if you have not laid down what that man laid down you will never carry what he carries are you hearing what i'm saying you can copy the way he talks you can wear suits like him if you cannot lay down and exchange what that man exchanged in the secret place you will never that's why you can listen to a message that may not be so powerful by a man of god but tremendous grace follows it because there is a fraternity with god that's why you can see a herbalist he can make people millionaires but he lives in a coven it was the exchange for the power he can make people billionaires but he will never stay in a big house he will never wear good clothes he will wear rags papa Deboe, i shared it last week he's made it a vow and a culture that everywhere he goes he will get down on his knees that was his exchange for the kind of glory what are you exchanging let me tell you when you enter into the realm of the spirit you will see men who have exchanged things men who have given their souls to herbalists they want the same job you want they want the same business you want they are killing human beings and sacrificing it and you are just standing lukewarm there is no sacrifice there's no exchange and you believe in the labor market and compete with them there must be an exchange it is this exchange that will end sickness in your body is this exchange that can make angels come and cover your plane so that it will not crash it's not just about you you have exchanged something in the spirit he said i shall not die this is the exchange for living long i will live to declare there are some people that are unkillable it's not about confession i will leave you don't know what they have done in the secret place that's why god can kill a whole nation for the sake of that man jacob have i loved esau have i hated when laban laban did not know the exchange he didn't know what happened between the mother of jacob and esau laban wanted to cheat jacob that anointing came and animals started reproducing after the the the, the colors of jacob's animal and laban said ah i testify that god has blessed me listen when a man has made an exchange in the realm of the spirit you touch him to your own detriment because there is an altar that speaks for him my altar is calling you oh god my altar is calling you oh god listen this is why you can see certain people shout and say i can never be poor they say i can never die i've told you i remember when i packed everything that i had home and abroad i put it in one bag and i went to a prosperity convention my entire life belonging home and abroad aside from the current clothes that i was wearing it took a sacrifice to put your family in the covenant of poverty it will take an exchange to bring them out don't let any man fool you i dragged those things to the altar i sat down outside like the overflow like this i know we've taken time but what i'm sharing is somebody's deliverance tonight any powerful man you see from today let me tell you something there was an exchange 
is an irrefutable spiritual law either to god or to the devil crowd does not just come are you hearing me koinonia people are not just coming because they want to come there is a force there is the strength of sacrifice unto god a covenant of teaching truth it's a fraternity with god oh god bring the people and i will teach them truth bring the people and i will teach them no matter what it will cost me and god said the deal is done and a young pastor just gets up and believes that is by church growth principle you come posters everywhere knock from door to door and the realm of the spirit is saying do you not know there is a law my altar rise up on your feet is calling you oh god my altar is calling you my altar is calling you hallelujah i'm going to make an altar call your first exchange starts when you come to jesus christ if you have not given your heart to the lord there is no exchange there is nothing that gives you the audacity to walk free from evil the devil will buffet you or if you've given your heart to the lord but you found yourself derailing is risky tonight run to this refuge called jesus christ if you are here inside and outside as we prepare to begin to pray you say man of god i want to make up my life with jesus christ i want to stand on a sure foundation please leave your seat and come out right now whether you are making that decision for the first time or not inside and outside take the courage to come out right now take the courage to come out right now god bless you take the courage to come out right now don't be ashamed don't be afraid of anybody if you are making that decision god bless you koinonia celebrate them inside and outside it's time to deal with the things that are destroying your destiny it starts with jesus keep coming we're out of time get tired of your life and say lord this is the first exchange tonight this is the first exchange make it for real make it for real exchanging your sin nature for his righteousness exchanging your weakness for his strength exchanging yokes and covenant for his liberty and freedom god bless you keep coming god bless you keep coming god bless you hallelujah those of you standing i salute you this is the first exchange you're making there's nothing to be ashamed of you will be separated from many things right now hallelujah lift your right hand and say after me lord jesus i love you and i believe in you tonight i have come before your throne of mercy to exchange my sin for your righteousness to exchange my weakness for your strength goodness the power of god is so strong as I stand here, I feel the anointing. In a very helping place. The law of exchange. This is what is happening in the realm of the spirit. I exchange my weakness for your strength. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I declare that I'm born again. My God. Spirit of the living God seal this exchange and from today i belong to jesus from today let the blood of jesus speak for me forward ever and backward never in the name of jesus father i pray that as these ones exchange the nature of sin for the righteousness of god i pray that every power that holds them let it live right now in the name of jesus christ they walk in righteousness and it's a new day for them in the name of jesus thank you jesus hallelujah to the name of the lord thank you so much for making this decision 
I want you to follow the ushers very quickly. They'll have your information and you'll be back. God bless you. Thank you so much. Two prayer points in two minutes and we're done. While we're praying these prayers, those who are visiting with us or worshiping with us for the first time, I'd like you to come out. There is always a prayer and a prophecy. So while you pray, just come out as you pray. Just come out as you pray. One prayer point. Oh Lord, I receive grace to stay in my jurisdiction of operation. Lift your voice and pray. While they are praying, first time I start coming out. God bless you. Everybody lift your voice and pray. Lord, I receive grace. I receive grace. In the name of Jesus. I receive grace. In the name of Jesus. I receive grace. God bless you. Keep coming. Everyone pray. I receive grace. I receive grace. I receive grace. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. You're going to say, Lord, tonight I exchange my life for your glory. Go ahead and pray. Lift your voice. Pray it from your heart. Take my life, oh God. It is true that I want to see your glory in my life. But I've been holding back. Tonight, oh God, take my life in exchange for your glory in exchange for your power in exchange for your wisdom in exchange for your strength let me live for you all the days of my life and lord i know you are committed to blessing me from today i am untouchable there is an exchange Come on, prophesy to yourself. I am unkillable. In the name of Jesus, there is a sacrifice on the altar. From today, I enjoy the lifting of God. I've given up my life for His glory, for His power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, those of you worshiping with us. What a night. You will never be the same in the name of Jesus. I assure you, you will return with dramatic testimonies of the hand of God upon your life. Through the teachings, the revelations, the prayer, something will happen in your life that will set you on fire. We want to pray for you and bless you. We are anointed and we are blessed in this house. As we pray for you, I want you to receive it. Saints of God, stretch your hands and pray for them. Call them blessed. It's within your power to bless them. You have become a living sacrifice. So there is grace for you to speak and it comes to pass. There is grace for you to sacrifice. You've given him your everything. Bless them, O oh God. We bless you with hunger for spiritual things. We bless you with the power of the Holy Ghost. We bless you with favor. May your heavens be open. You will go back and walk in dramatic miracles and testimonies. The favor of God is upon you. We bless you with the gift of God's presence upon this house. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for worshiping with us. This is Koinonia. We are here every week. This is not our permanent venue. We are using this for now. But we bless you and thank you for coming. We honor you. And I want you to know that the Lord will take you from glory to glory in the name of Jesus. I'd like you to please follow the ushers, the gentlemen in red and black. And they will warmly welcome you and give you some information and you'll be back. Celebrate them, Koinonia, very quickly. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salman. 
and that is I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye